Okay, 2007 Mercedes-Benz GL450. <clears throat> uh, this is a motor mount removal, left and right. We're starting with the passenger side. I've seen a few different techniques. There's not much out there right now as far as live video uh, for this job. Uh, but um, uh, some other uh, DIYer had uh, recommended removing the wheel, the strut, uh, the uh, upper control arm, uh, and I think possibly the axle as well. I'm not sure, but um, at least those three to uh, make room through a window uh, to access it through the wheel well to get at the top engine mount bolt. Um, the tool I was using uh, is pretty much your standard tool. And uh, let's see if I can locate it here. But uh, the tool I was using was pretty much a standard tool. And uh, looks like this. Yeah, this one is uh, made by KTC. It's a 16 millimeter and it goes typically, not typically, it, it goes onto the bolt like this with a 3 8 inch adapter here, socket rather. Uh, for uh, torquing loose that nut top bolt. It's actually a bolt on this model. Problem is, this tool um, is not really universal. I did not get enough clearance of the, as you can see here, no uh, secret of the, of the header. Uh, so what I ended up doing was removing the header. And so for all of you DIYers out there, I found this to be the lesser of two evils. I didn't really want to mess with the suspension. I didn't want to mess with the alignment. I didn't want to remove the strut. <laughs> it's quite a lot of work. So uh, you've seen it done in different ways. For the passenger side uh, bolt, you have two options. You either make sure that you have a uh, KTC tool. This is the MBZ1051, excuse me, 1051B. Uh, if you have one of these that's about a half an inch longer, uh, you're golden. If I had something that could have extended this out by a half inch, uh, also you'd be golden. Uh, but I didn't have that on me, and so for the sake of time, I just removed the header. And look at this. I've got such nice, such nice access right now. I can even, even put the camera in so you can view the bolt that needs to come off. And note how there's a kind of a raised area over here that means the axis can only happen from the distal half of that mount so we're now with that removed we should have no problem getting the uh let's see if i can angle this with that removal we'll have no problem getting the special tool specialty tool on and now i've got plenty of you can see i've got plenty of room and uh top access to get a extension and it'll look like this see i've got now i've got clearance and so i'll take a, another extension and i'll just take it all the way up into the top part of the engine bay and then torque so that is what i chose to do here i there may be other ways to do it again the best way would be to have the tool that's prob probably a little bit larger i would scan the internet see if you can find a tool uh that's slightly larger again i uh, just to show you uh, I have, we have seen some techniques that recommend going through. You can see through here, we can still, through here, you can still get a, a peek right there at the bolts. And I, God, I found that to be very cumbersome. There's actually no room here to torque left and right because of the strut. With the strut removed, you're fine. But uh, again, I didn't want to mess the strut. Uh, I didn't want to mess the alignment. Uh, certainly just didn't want to mess with suspension if I didn't have to. It's not the toughest job, but usually the uh, lower control arm needs to be loosened up to get enough clearance uh, and enough uh, to lower, lower the suspension enough to get the uh, strut out. Uh, plus, you've got you're always taking a risk when you disconnect the lines up top with the uh, air pneumatics, and uh, it's just I found that to be a lot easier. Um, again, you're going to want to remove that upper bar here. You're going to want to remove uh, to get the exhaust off. There are two bolts, by the way. Um, on the lower portion of the exhaust here, here and here. Uh, those 
or actually access to the bottom. Uh, the medial bolt, or this bolt, the medial bolt, okay, on this side right here, that's pretty straightforward. You'll be able to get a couple extensions on there and access it. The left side, you're gonna have to remove a heat shield first. Okay, that's an exhaust heat shield. You'll need to remove that. And uh, let's see if I can take a picture of that here. Let's see if I've got that ready. That is this, this right here. You can see there's one, two, and three bolts. Those are, I believe, 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, you're gonna wanna use a stubby flex head ratchet uh, to get those off and they're, they're pretty straightforward. So that comes off and then you've got access to those lower bolts. Uh, and, uh, and that's pretty much the two. And then you've got eight here and one, two, three, four, five below. So you've got a total of one, two, three, four. You've actually got nine bolts on this exhaust here. Uh, and sometimes you'll note near there right here. Sometimes you'll see some come off and some actually don't come off and pull the studs out. Uh, either way is fine. Just make sure that when you put the uh, exhaust back on, you thread the st all the studs in before you start cranking, obviously, and uh, uh, be careful not to strip out those studs in the head. That would be a, a huge problem. Uh, there's also a gasket here. If you have it, it's a good time to change that. If you're planning to do it this way and you don't have a stubby tool, the right tool, uh, I'm gonna end up reusing this gasket uh, because customer uh, client is gonna be uh, parting with this vehicle shortly. But again, that's the uh, passenger side top, uh, how to access the passenger side top engine mount bolt on a 2007, I think to 2012, Mercedes-Benz GL450. Uh, I hope you have uh, found this uh, tutorial useful, and if so, please like and subscribe. Have a great afternoon.